No, I was too fat. Uh, no, you didn't play this. <laughs> <laughs> Brutally honest, too. Look at that. That's why we're here. Catch me up, bro. How's everything going? Tell me a little things, bit about... Things are great, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, tell me a little bit about what you're doing. What is it, Slim slim Thick? Slim Thick Sports, yeah, that's a good time. But yeah, nice. I, you know, I'm at Bridgewater State. I'm about to finish up my degree. And uh, between the pandemic, I, I lost my job, unfortunately. Uh, and I actually ran this blog back uh, in freshman year of college. Um, long story short, like, I left Fitchburg State. I was um, relatively sick, um, so I withdrew from college. And I was going to go to college no matter what. But by the time I was healthy, I still had um, I still had about three months until the, the spring semester. Um, you know, and I just, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? You know, um, I had a good amount of change, so I didn't want to start working again. And uh, my dream was always to run a, a charismatic, um, vulgar, but insightful uh, sports blog. That was always my goal. You know, I wanted to go to school for journalism, uh, but I love saying fuck. Uh, so I can't, I can't work, I can't work for like an ESPN. I like that, right. you know? So I, I started this blog uh, when I was uh, 19, you know, and it was great. And then to be honest, man, I kind of ran out of money, went back to school, went back to work. So I ran out of time, you know, and um, through the pandemic, I just have a shit ton of time. Uh, yeah. So I figured I might as well start just talking shit online again, you know, and it's going great. I mean, I have 25 guys writing besides me already. And uh, wow, we're great really? Yeah, 25? Man. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. That's right. crazy, man. How'd you rec recruit those guys? Just buddies or just uh, all the time? Yeah, pretty much word of mouth through social media. I mean, I this was a hit when I did it back, when me and the guys did it back uh, freshman year of college. So I wanted to hop back in, which was awesome, you know. And like I said, I texted you this morning about it. Like, you know, there's no deadlines or quotas. Just, you know, it's a journal to express your thoughts, you know. Right. Um, because with me, I can, I'll just say whatever the fuck I want online, but a lot of people won't, you know, so like this, this outlet, this, this website's an outlet to kind of get your thoughts across, which is awesome. Yeah. It's unique, man. How that, uh, that's sort of arisen out of like Barstool and I feel like Barstool was sort of the first one to really do that and, and make a, make a killing off of it. And, Definitely. Uh, yeah. But, but they were the first ones to sort of break that barrier where, Hey, we can do this. We can be a little vulgar. We can say stuff out of the ordinary and it's still cool and, and like we can make a niche and there's a market for it and so sort of this alternative media and now uh we're seeing all these other kind of niche you know little Definitely, yeah, little you know, um grow pop up my biggest take when i get compared to barstool because obviously they, they overlap it's uh you know it's a vulgar sports blog you know but uh my take is david you know david Perona didn't patent you know running a, a, a fucking funny sports blog you know so no. we're doing our we're doing our thing we're doing great and i'm having a great time it's definitely filling the void for sure and it's going awesome man um have it a blast. Nice, man. Do you think uh, you were inspired by Barstool and like sort of initially modeled things after them? Because I know when I originally started my podcast, I've talked about this before, back in the day when I was running the podcast, um, it was like, it's crazy, man, how much I modeled it after Joe Rogan and the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, he's killing like, it, dude. Yeah, and, and, and that, that, I mean, that hindered me because creatively I was trying to be someone that I wasn't, but do you think Barstool was sort of the original inspiration for you? Dude, or? Joe, not one bit, man, to be honest with you. I know they overlap, but I think, I think you know, we have overlapping personalities, to be honest. I became probably a Barstool fan, honestly, after I started something, if not just before I graduated high school. Um, so not at all, man. I just think, I guess their, I guess their website's kind of my dream without even realizing it, you know? Nice, man. That's yeah, dope. Definitely. That's pretty cool that you have a team of writers around you as well. Do you have a like a niche area? Does everyone have their own niche area that they write in, or is it no, kind of I mean, general? It's super, it's super broad. You mean like category wise? No, it's super yeah, broad, yeah. which is awesome. So if you want to talk about basketball one day or like a shitty restaurant the other day, you can. Like reviews is a big aspect of our website as well. Um, mm -hmm. It's very diverse, and you can write about what you want. You know, I've had people just do like cameo blogs where they'll write one blog and be done. You know, and that's that's it. Like I said, uh, it's just a journal for your thoughts, and it's going awesome. You know. And if awesome. anyone watching this, you're more than welcome to hop on Slim Thick if you want, you know? How does it work? So you just have a website and you give someone an account or something? And they yeah, no, it. not even that. Um, I probably should do that. But no, I just, um, I kind of just do it via like text or DM or email. Or if I get shot an email, um, I will just pretty much copy and paste your blog, edit, you know, revise, and then you're on the website. Simple as that, you know? And I really, I don't have a filter myself. So I don't, personally, I don't filter anything on the website at all. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're going to be politically correct, but like you can write whatever yeah. you want, long story short, you know? Right. That's awesome, man. That's really exciting. Um, so what's the plan? I know you mentioned you're, you're back to, to Bridgewater now, yes, right? You, you guys, you're going virtually right now? Is this your yeah, it's, it's, it's all, yeah, all remote. I don't have any Zoom calls or any of that bullshit. So it's great. I can just, my work's due uh, Thursday and Sunday. And then I pretty much have the other five days to just kind of chill and work on the website, suck at golf and just hang out, you know? Um, nice, but yeah, man. so yeah. But my future, my plans are slim thick, man. We'll see how it goes. You know, I, the views have been awesome. 
Um, we're about seven to eight thousand deep in three weeks or about four weeks now, which is pretty pretty good considering. Wow, man. Not bad. Yeah, definitely. But um, we'll see how it goes. You know, I um, we have some merchandise coming out relatively soon uh, that people have expressed interest in, and that's all going to go towards just the budget for the website. You know, nice. we're going to get some podcasts going and content relatively soon as well, which should be pretty pretty fun. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love I love what you said in there too. I think it's really, really important is uh, the merchandise and the money that you'll make off of that. It's like, you, you probably aren't even gonna take the touch. It's just gonna go right back into the no. business. And exactly. I think that's so, so important. It's something I'm realizing as well now is uh, there's this great book, book called Profit First by this guy, Mike Michalowicz. Talks about um, dealing with your money and how to allocate your money within your business and like, you know, healthily growing your business and, and where to put your money. And it's, it's, it's so true, man. Like allocating it towards, put it right back into the business, man. And it doubled down, you know, you get a little revenue in early. There's, especially if you're not working, I mean, there's definitely a tendency to want to take some of that for yourself and, and pay yourself back for all the hard work, but like throw it right back into the business, double down, um, you know, get better equipment, get better, whatever you can do to grow, put it in. Definitely, man, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I can't thank the guys with me enough. You know I mean? Guys are right for free, having a good time and it's awesome. You know, I wouldn't be anything without my, my coworkers. I don't even want to say they work for me. We work together, you know, because it's not really a company yet. I'm not making money. We're all just buddies having a good time. You know, and yeah. I, I can't appreciate. And like, it's funny, Joe. I have a guy from Pittsburgh right for us. I got a guy in New York, Connecticut. It's like we're kind of, as James would say, with the platform, we're kind of like expanding, which is awesome. You know, mm, that's yeah, that is awesome, dude. So let's talk about that a little bit, like with your team. I mean, I I, I love it, man. I love. It seems like you got a great personality for it, and then you got a great group of guys around you. So. Are most of these individuals who are writing for you, are they are they your friends, close friends? And they're writing? Yeah, pretty, pretty much, man. Pretty much. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've met, it's funny, I met one dude from Virginia, uh, just based on my Twitter. He's, he's a Steelers fan, so am I. And I was just talking shit about Ben Roethlisberger one day. He thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, and anyway, like, we follow each other. And, like, he's probably the one guy, I mean, he's a good friend of mine now. But besides him, a bunch of hometown kids from pretty much, you know, I'd say between Norfolk and Norwood. Um, and it's, it's going awesome, you know. It's, um, it's really cool. And I can't appreciate, once again, the guys... Uh, enough. Nice, man. So you talked a little bit about the merch and getting some uh, some monetization there. Um, is there is there future plans for monetization in terms of because obviously, you know, this is fun to do and I'm sure you do it without my favor, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure down the line, the goal is to eventually be doing this full time and have this be your sort of full time salary and, and I, would, you and I stuff. would love that more than anything, brother. Uh, yeah, I mean, that comes down to kind of seeking out people to you know put their advertising on the website and just uh, merchandise, you know, but obviously, um, well, this is kind of like a non-profit thing for now. I'd love to eventually make a couple bucks, you know, by uh, doing my dream, you know. Um, I really wanted to go to Syracuse out, out of Kinkville. Um, finances in the family were kind of in the way. And also, like, I just I just knew the way I wrote. I think I'm a relatively good writer. Um, but I think the way I write wouldn't translate to standards. And uh, I'm a big believer. Actually, I'm not a believer in social norms and standards. You know, I want to do my life my way. And it's um, going pretty well so far. So. Nice, man. So, so you wanted to go to, I'm sorry, you said you wanted to go to Syracuse University? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. For journalism? Yes. Yep. But you ended up going to Bridgewater for journalism? Or I did. Uh, no, not Fitchburg. even. I'm in, I'm in business. Uh, that's pretty much, you know, I guess I'm running a business now. You know, I guess like I'd rather have a safer major and learn more about, you know, um, I don't know. Just I thought business was safer than journalism, but I've written my, you know, I, I write, I know you're talking to you about Fat Boy, I write stories, I write sports blogs, I'm writing every day, you know, so I'm pretty much, I think I'm major in journalism without actually being major in it. Long well, story short. Gotcha. I like that. So what's 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 this fat boy thing now on the other side? So you have slim yeah. thick and fat boy. <laughs> yeah, man, we're, we're staying busy, man. Uh, I mean, fat boy was something that McGee started got when he was just a kid, maybe 13, 14, you know? And without knowing it, me and my good friends from Norway were doing the same thing at the same time. Um, like three or four of my best friends, we were doing side projects. And we kept plateauing. We kept getting so close to getting a movie done, and we just wouldn't get it done. And I think McGee was kind of the summer boat, too. So when me, him, and Chris all intertwined, I guess, let's say junior, sophomore, year, high school, it just worked, you know? We had, like McGee talked about recently, we had, like, Rip Line. We had, um, I think, First Day is our best film, film ever. I'm not sure if you saw it. I know you're not familiar with the page. We reenacted the first day of high school, and that was probably our most viewed uh, video, and I think, personally, our best. I would, honestly, I'm not trying to plug this, but I, I'd recommend it. Uh, it's one of the best things we've ever written, you know? Uh, but with, with McGee, with McGee over in South Carolina, out with the boys, and Chris, our best friend Chris is in a rock band, like a Slim Thick. Fat Boy's, I wouldn't say on the decline, but it's not really a top priority. I got a couple funny skits ideas uh, in the brain, but we're not really focused on it right now. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I don't want to speak for this, this is a little outside my area of expertise, but it seems like a lot more work to put together a full production, a video and all that stuff, as opposed to just, you know, sitting down, writing a blog, writing an article. I mean, you couldn't agree more, like, dude. 
an hour as opposed to like putting a full full production together is a little yeah, more yeah. difficult. And I'm definitely an ideas guy for sure. So when it comes to that fucking shit, I have no idea, bro. I mean, I mean, like the stuff that McGee and those guys do is incredible. I, I'm just an asshole on camera, and it works. Uh, right, right. There <laughs> so, you go, man. Yeah, I love it. So you back in uh, you back in the tri town now, just chilling there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, me and my family moved to Attleboro. Um, okay. Like sophomore year, I swear, sorry, sophomore year of college. So I've been here for about three years now. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm always I'm always living in the tri. All my best friends live in Northport, rent the plane, so I'm always there. But yeah, I'm about. 15, 15 minutes out of the trial right now. I'm over at Elbro. Nice, man. Good stuff. Yeah. So um, once you graduate from Bridgewater, I'm assuming that you'll have your degree and you'll probably want to go into the business world and make some money for a little bit? Or, yeah, or that's, that's exact, exactly my plan, Joe. I was actually offered a job at a marketing firm at Braintree this week. Uh, so I have a call. I got to stop collecting unemployment. <laughs> Life's hard. So I uh, I got I got because I lost my job due to COVID obviously, but I got a call uh, for a marketing firm this week at some point that I think I'm gonna get, um, and that'll pay the bills for the time being. But after graduation, man, we're gonna see. You know, I'm gonna keep writing, keep blogging, and if like you said, mon mon like making money. If I am, we'll see how it goes. You know, um, but for the time being, I would say like you just said, I'd probably want to make some money, hang in the business world, and see how it goes. You know. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I definitely, it, it, yeah, I mean, there's different ways to go for sure. And it, it depends on everyone's, uh, depends on everyone's sort of position. But um, I think if you can, I think the best advice I could give someone who's trying to do something kind of on the side as a side hustle is like, you can find a job in the area, in the realm, in the industry, in the field that you're trying to get into. It, it, it just makes it a lot easier uh, because you know, having both where before I've had jobs where it wasn't in the industry and it was in something I didn't really care about and I was just doing it for the money and then I was doing my thing on the side. Yep. It, it's kind of like you feel like those hours are wasted. Whereas if you're doing work within the industry that you want to be in, like I am now, it's you're, you're really, you're, you're, you're kind of like your day job is, is married to your, um, to your side hustle. And that's right. huge. So, that's yeah, man, I mean, that's, yeah, I think, I think that's a, that's a big piece of advice, but you know, also there's some individuals who are, who are good with just going with it, man. They got some money saved up and they can, they can go full on. They're going to put the time into it and, and monetize and, and go full in and, and all the power to them, man. That, that's exciting as well.